Is yeah. Gettleman blowing this right. thing? Like whatever chance the Giants have, you brought up you brought up players that they could have signed cheaper instead of franchising and then signing for more. You've brought up instances where they haven't gotten draft compensation because they they you know of stupid trades they've made. I'm incensed by the fact that they cut Zeitler. He's now with another team. That was what like so. What'd you trade Odell for if now you're you're short one big playmaker on offense? It, what's your assessment of Dave Gettleman as GM? Well, to me, it all starts in 2018 when he came in and the assessment he made of the roster. I mean, if you think about it, at the time, the Giants were 3-13. and 13. They had just fired Jerry Reese. They had fired Ben McAdoo. He came in, and the way he evaluated the roster was, this roster can compete right away. And instead of making the proper moves, starting the rebuild then, he sort of doubled down on the same mistakes that cost Jerry Reese his job. And that's why the Giants are still playing catch up in 2021. I mean, you can go back to the decision to draft Saquon Barkley with the number two pick. Saquon's a great player, don't get it wrong. But we're now in year four and the Giants are not competing for the playoffs. They're still in a rebuild mode. So you have to wonder when, when are the Giants gonna be competing with Saquon Barkley given the fact that we know the shelf life of a running back, it's a replaceable position, it's not valued as much. So they're still playing catch up from 2018. And then throughout that, the, the last four years, some of the decisions, players they let go. Max, let me ask you a question. The Giants traded Jason Pierre-Paul in 2018. Since then, have they replaced a player? Uh, have they found a pass rusher as good as Jason Pierre-Paul? No, the last several regimes have been awful. Like, Jerry Reese inherited a team that was winning, and he made a few nice moves right. early in his tenure as GM in the draft and such. But since then, he was awful. Gettleman's been awful. No, they have not. They don't have a premier pass rusher like that. Beyond that, though, it's to me, what's emblematic of the Giants' problems and where I really want to see them address it fully is the offensive line, right? Like, the offensive line that Eli had when they won in 07 and 11, even though David Deal was moved from guard to tackle, and oh, really? It's not a, a premier left tackle, but he was a, a, like at least like a B-plus left tackle. And they had a very good line with some talent. They played together well, and it was one of the better lines in the NFL. Since then... Their offensive line has been terrible. And and talking to Weiss Carsey of Giants Daily, you could follow him on Twitter. He's great, Giants Daily. Got about 50,000 followers and has great Giants stuff uh, on the Goodyear Hotline, Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. And anyway, Weiss, the, the um, offensive line, they've devoted resources to it. First round picks, second round picks, third round picks. I want your assessment of where the Giants are on the O-line because you can talk Saquon Barkley. Did he reach for Daniel Jones? Daniel Jones didn't develop in year two. That's the development year. Who knows? Are they a Galladay away or an outside threat away uh, in terms of their offense? What about the pass rush? defense? Who knows? What I need to know more than anything, where we can start square one, do they have an offensive line? The answer to that is it's uncertain. They're going to have a lot of young pieces on their offensive line. Andrew Thomas, who they took with the number four pick last year, who sort of was up and down, but that's understandable for a rookie tackle. They take a couple years to come on. He's going to be your left tackle. You're going to have Will Hernandez, who they drafted in 2018. Who I in liked in college. I li in the second round, I thought yeah. that was actually value, to tell you the right. truth. Yeah. Right. But his development has not come on the way the Giants had hoped. He was – he was pretty much non-existent last year. I mean, he wasn't a starter. And then at center, you got Nick Gates, who I really like. I think this is going to be a very valuable piece on the Giants' offensive line, not only because he's their center, but he can play guard. He can play tackle. He's very versatile. The Giants, will, that's a real valuable piece for, that Dave Gettleman found. And then at right guard, you're going with a, with a fourth or fifth round pick in Shea Lemieux that they drafted last year. They like him. We'll see. And then the right tackle spot, Matt Pert, their third-round pick from last year. So this is a very young offensive line. But, Max, I want to, you know, mention something. You talk about investment in the offensive line. Yes, last year we saw investments in their offensive line, draft uh, a tackle in the first round in the Dave Gellman. But in the first two years, they only drafted two offensive linemen. Yep. 
and they had out of like 13 or 14 picks that they had, it was Will Hernandez in the second round, and then in the seventh round, they took George Asafu Adaije from Kentucky. So there hasn't been real investments in the offensive line by Dave Gellman up until last year. Yeah, I thought so he believed in the hog mollies. Young guys. What happened to the hog mollies? Remember exactly. the introductory press conference right. with that terrible Boston accent? No, exactly. And the hog mollies? Where exactly. are they? Yeah. Exactly. Jerry Reese invested. He just didn't get the results. Eric Flowers, Justin Pugh, Weston Richburg, they all but this is what on. I w- Look, look, look let's Flowers stop right there. Complete total bust. C- look, Weiss Carzy, Giants Daily here on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Let's stop right there. Because drafting is part of it. Development is the other part. Like... Flowers is okay right. off the Giants. He didn't. He hasn't. He hasn't like uh, uh, really substantiated. He hasn't justified being picked. What was he ninth overall? He hasn't justified that. And I thought, yep. what do I know? I thought he was talented, the most talented guy. Oh yeah, we got Flowers. But but he's a he's a starting offensive lineman in the NFL. He was not that for the Giants. How much of this is the Giants failing to develop players? Well, it's a failure to develop, and then it's also a failure to keep your talent. Like, Weston Richburg was a good center for San Francisco, and he was a good center here, too, but the Giants didn't bring him back. Now, the Giants have had a lot of turnover with coaching. I mean, you go from Tom Coughlin to Ben McAdoo to Pat Shermer to now Joe Judge. You're talking, you know, four head coaches in six years, so it's tough when you're having that much turnover on your coaching staff to really develop guys because a system goes out, a new system comes in, it's a new philosophy, guys, you know, coaches bring in guys that fit, you know, their their system. So it's it's tough to develop when you have so much turnover. Um, But the offensive line, look, going into this year, they moved on from Zeitler. It's tough. His cap hit was high, but the reduced salary cap, the Leonard Williams situation and how they had to franchise him, they had to move on from Kevin Zeitler. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.